How much coverage is uh, this story getting where you are? This is not a big headline item here in the United States. Uh, this is something that certainly is of interest to foreign policy circles here in Washington. It is of interest to embassies, of course. But that is pretty much it. It's also not necessarily a surprise. Uh, what we're seeing here is uh, a repetition, in, in a sense, of what the Trump administration has been doing when it comes to international treaties and international organizations since Donald Trump uh, stepped into the White House. Uh, but the Trump, uh, um, the Trump administration just take, taking that as one little step further here when it comes to the International Criminal Court. It didn't have much of a relationship with it in the first place, pretty much none really. But this pretty much grinds everything absolutely to a halt with that added extra, if you will, coming from the National Security Advisor John Bolton of the possibility of sanctions toward those who might take charges against the United States and the, against U.S. service members to the International Criminal Court. The fact that it's John Bolton who made this announcement, this very tough announcement yesterday is not a surprise either. He was instrumental in getting other countries to sign up in not uh, producing charges against U.S. service members. He was also, of course, very happy uh, that any relationship between the United States and the ICC was not ratified uh, in the first place. Uh, there was a red line here, though, clearly, uh, for the Trump administration. That was that very concrete possibility of accusations against U.S. service members in Afghanistan being brought to the International Criminal Court, accusations of torture. That would have been very much a red line for the United States, hence why it is pretty much stopping any kind of a relationship and even uh, imposing the possibility of sanctions right now. There is also the fact that there could be charges against Israel for war crimes coming from Palestinians. That would also go to the International Criminal Court. Another very clear red line for the United States and certainly for the Trump administration. Yeah, the rest of the world playing by U.S. rules when it comes to uh, the restoration of uh, sanctions on Iran. Philip, later in the France 24 debate, we're going to be asking what the future of international justice is after that speech by John Bolton. And one of the questions is, how far are Republicans willing to follow Trump? And there are quite a few uh, truths that uh, are very evident here in the United States right now after almost two years of the Trump presidency, one of which is Donald Trump is very popular with Republicans. He says he's the most popular U.S. president of all time within his own party. That, of course, is very difficult to prove, considering how many hundreds of years you'd have to go back and find some polling. But this is important because Donald Trump has brought to an end, uh, for example, the nuclear deal with Iran, uh, the United States' role in the Paris Climate Agreement, and so, so many other international relationships and international treaties. Uh, he can do all of, this with, with all of this without any significant opposition from his supporters around the country. Then, of course, there are also the elected Republicans here in Washington who also are very much on board with Donald Trump and won't criticize him for most of his foreign policy decisions. That includes this clear opposition, clearer than ever, uh, from the United States toward the International uh, Criminal Court. This might change, of course, with the midterms in November of this year. A lot of those who are up for re-election, Republicans, that is, they're waiting to see whether their, uh, their approval of Donald Trump, their siding with Donald Trump on all of his foreign policy decisions might be punished by the voters when it comes to those midterm elections in November. But until then, elected Republicans are playing it very, very safe indeed and keep on siding with the Trump administration. And that will be the case with any controversial foreign policy decisions that will come from the Trump administration.